Justice Clarence Thomas is a great American, an outstanding justice. I have total confidence in Justice Thomas' impartiality in every aspect of the work of the court. Well, if your wife is an admitted and proud contributor to a coup of our country, maybe you should weigh that in your ethical standards. Congressional leaders weighing in on Justice Thomas. Let's talk to Republican Senator Roy Blunt of Missouri right now. Senator Blunt, thanks for joining us this morning. Let's start with those issues that I, where I finished with Ron Klain. I'm starting with Judge Ketanji Brown uh, Jackson. Have you made up your mind yet? Well, well I have, George, and uh, I'm going to be with you this morning. You know, I've, I've thought uh, initially, uh, my sense is that the president certainly had every uh, good intention and every every right in the campaign to talk about putting uh, the first black woman on the court. I think it's time for that to happen. Uh, I was hoping that I could be part of that. I had a great conversation with her. Really, there are two criteria, as I said immediately. One is, is the person qualified for the job? And two is, what's their judicial philosophy? Uh, she's certainly qualified. I think she's got a great personality. I think will be a good colleague on the court. But the judicial philosophy is, seems to be uh, not the philosophy of looking at what the law says and the Constitution says and applying that, but going through some method that allows you to try to uh, look at the Constitution as a more flexible document and even the law. And there are cases that show that that's uh, her view. I think she's certainly going to be confirmed. I think it'll be a high point for the country to see her go on the court and take uh, her unique perspective to the court. Uh, but I don't think she's the kind of judge that will really do the kind of work that I think needs to be done by the court. And uh, I won't be supporting her, but I'll, I'll be uh, joining others in understanding the importance of uh, this moment. If it's a high point for the country, why not support her? Well, I think the lifetime appointments have a different criteria than other appointments. I've supported a significant number of uh, President Biden's nominees to, to offices that will end, their time will end while he's still in office or when he leaves office. I think that's a different criteria than somebody putting somebody on the court for life. Uh, I don't think I've supported any district judges that he's appointed up till now, the Court of Appeals level justice uh, judges. Uh, and she just doesn't meet the criteria that over and over again, uh, I've said in the last decade that uh, the advise and consent uh, part of the of the Constitution gives the Senate more responsibility than just saying uh, she's qualified, you appointed her, we're going to approve her. And that clearly has not been the role of the Senate for a couple of decades now. Uh, and it certainly wasn't the role that Democrats saw as their role. Uh, in the last Congress, when three qualified judges uh, had the same kind of, of uh, view that I think uh, we have now, that do you need to also agree with whether you think that judge is going to be a judge that thinks it's their job uh, to, to rule on what they think the law and the constant should, Constitution should say, or is it their job to rule on what the law and the Constitution does say? And I come down strongly on that side. How about these calls for Justice Thomas to recuse himself from the January 6th investigation cases, given the active involvement of his wife, Jenny Thomas, and the push for an ethics code for Supreme Court justices? Well, the idea that you can't disagree with uh, your wife on a public issue and still be a, 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 able to function as a judge or as a government figure of any kind, I think, is, a, is an idea that's long uh, outlived any idea that it might be reasonable. Uh, Judge you know Thomas that he disagrees with her? Decide that. No, Judge Thomas will have to decide that. In his personal opinions, I think in his writings over the years, in, aren't, aren't part of his judicial philosophy. He's going to look at the law. He's going to look at what the law says and what the Constitution says and, and rule in that regard. I'm certainly totally uh, supportive of the Justice Department effort uh, to find out uh, who did what on January the 6th, if they were part of any illegal activity, either executing that or planning that, I think they should be prosecuted, and I'm, I'm very supportive of that and have been publicly. In fact, the committee that um, Senator Klobuchar and I run, we did an early investigation. We've made a number of changes about how to secure the Capitol and uh, 85 recommendations on 
how we can prevent that from happening again, but it was totally unacceptable what happened on January the 6th, and I think the Justice Department's pursuing that uh, exactly as they should. Including the possible prosecution of President Trump, we saw that federal judge say it's likely the president broke the law. Well, federal judges say a lot of things, and we'll see how that comes through the process. I, I think what I said is what I believe. I think uh, the Justice Department has a job to do. Uh, they should do it, and people who were involved in planning or execution of illegal activities on January the 6th should be prosecuted. You heard Ron Klain taking on critics of the president's budget, like you, who said it's, gonna, it's, it's reckless spending, pointing out that the deficit has come down from the high level of the deficit under President Trump. Well, I think the most reckless thing the president did in spending is the, the uh, March decision on a totally partisan way for the first time in anything we're dealing with COVID uh, to try to come back and put $2 trillion into an economy uh, that was already well on the way to recovery. Uh, Larry Summers uh, said that was a problem. Others have said not only is that a problem, but further massive spending on new programs uh, is a problem. The biggest political issue in the country today is clearly inflation. People are seeing uh, not only gas prices at astronomical levels, and they were, by the way, at, at unacceptable levels long before Val uh, Putin did anything regarding Ukraine. They went up for almost every day beginning, not just the day after the president was inaugurated, but the day after he was elected, as people were seeing what was going to happen with his energy policies. And commodity prices as high in some cases as 20 percent. All you have to do is go to the gas station or the grocery store or pay your winter heating bill to know that something unacceptable has happened. And I think that's this excessive level of spending that Democrats all on their own put two tr $1.9 trillion into the economy uh, in March, and it'll take us a long time to recover from that and even longer to pay it back. Finally, let me end with you where I began with Ron Klain. Do you believe that Russia is losing this war in Ukraine, and what more can the United States be doing right now to support the Ukrainian resistance? Well, I think we should be doing everything we can. We should give them what they need as quickly as they need it. I think, frankly, what the president's done has generally been the right thing, but about two or three weeks slower uh, than it should have been. I've been saying that since we had the, the uh, sanctions discussion before the invasion. What would be interesting, I think, would, would be to know whether uh, Putin was more surprised by the incredible resistance of the Ukrainians, the rallying around of NATO to the original and unified purpose of NATO, particularly the German change uh, in attitude, or how poorly his own military has performed. Uh, I'm sure he's surprised by all three of those, and frankly, I think we've been surprised by all three of those. Our, our intelligence committee did a great job of knowing what the Russians were doing, the false flag operations, all of those things, incredibly helpful. But I don't think anybody could have anticipated those three uh, big events or those three big items or, frankly, the leadership of Pre President Zelensky. Uh, I hope he continue to be uh, safe and brave and uh, his country is rallying behind uh, that uh, willingness to be there and be in the fight. Senator Blunt, thanks for your time this morning. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.